Hello everyone, this is Blender Guppy. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate random starship and random flow. So we're going to create a spaceship and then I'm going to use random flow to bake a texture to use for the uh, paneling uh, texture for the shader of the uh, spaceship or starship. So let's delete this cube and use our random starship operator. So I'm going to use the wing sharp preset and then I'm going to reduce the edge cuts. This, uh, this refers to the edge cuts per section, per house section. I'm going to reduce this to zero. And I'm just going to experiment with the shape. So in the next update, uh, some UA change. So the triangulation codify and auto smooth are now in the um, how property section. So I remove them from the setting section and then place them here. And I'm going to also turn on the screencast keys because I forgot to turn it on. Okay. Um, so wing sharp, press it, reduce the edge cuts to zero. And I'm going to just uh, experiment with the all seed and see what I like. So if it, um, I'm going to randomize and pick something that I like from the resulting shapes. So um, right now scale interval is two, which means that um, for every second, for every uh, second how section generated, there's uh, scaling would be possible. So it's going to scale that how section for uh in interval sub two there was segments let's try and create a bump of twenty how sections of twelve okay. so uh when uh random setting the house section you can try and just use zero or one to make the um process lighter because if you increase the detail and if you, especially if you're using a uh, plating detail and you're trying to randomize the seed with all those details, so it's going to be slow. So what I, what I do is just uh, randomize uh, the starship or the shape or its initial shape using subdivision level zero or one and just look at the, uh, main shape or the big shapes or the profile shape of the ship and not really uh or ignoring just ignoring the inside detail for now so i'm just uh, focused on the outline of the ship or the main shape and the um, secondary shape also inside the model but the uh the tiny details so that's for later so i'm just going to yeah this also looks good so if i find something like this then i can experiment with uh some of the some of the properties so you might be wondering this this is a lot of properties so but they're not gonna be used every time so you're not gonna come in here and do this individually so there's there's just some main properties here that you can touch and basically just ignore everything else. So what I want to do now is just, uh, is to, so this is the bridge extrusion, uh, this one here and this one here. So this is the Z axis and this is the X axis. The Y axis is our hull section. So I'm going to taper the X axis. Uh, this is the front and this is the back. So if I'm going to taper this, I'm going to look at the X taper at the back and reducing the value shrinks it and increasing it 
uh, gives it, gives it a shape like that. And also the Z axis at the back. Also uh, a bit of um, taper there. Okay, so edge cuts. So this is the subdivision or basically the edge cut of the X and the Z. So this is the Z, uh, I mean the, um, I, um, this refers to the edge cuts of the Z axis and also the X axis uh, bridge extrusion. And this refers to the front and this is the back. Okay, so since we don't have the front, we don't have anything on the front. So the front, if I were to create, if I want to create a bridge extrusion there, so front, depth, oh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, I need to expand it. So there's zero extrusion. So I need to at least have one, and then I can create an extrusion. um to probably increase the bridge tolerance this refers to the uh normals so the higher it is the more faces it can include with the extrusion so let's try this again okay there we go it's probably the bridge tolerance is too uh, big there we go and there it is the bridge extrusion at the front and we can also have the depth uh the z as well so right now let's just focus on the front so zero and reset to default value So for the plating, I'm going to increase this to 500 and I'm going to use fill. So the size of the plating means that uh, the minimum size is two, which means that um, can kind of operates like this the plating so let me show you how this script works so this is just uh one plating inset and this is two two three four so minimum is two and maximum is four for uh for example so this refers to the size of the plating this one here and this also depends on the and if you increase the subdivision, of course, you have more faces to play with. Okay, wing sharp. And then let's just play around with the lower subdivision. Also have the house mode. Okay, 20. And let's look for a shape that looks cool and 12 let's try 16 whole sections and let's look for a shape that uh, looks cool i've also added in something that uh could let would let you avoid the spikes i think this one's good So we have some sort of a bridge here. Let's try and increase the, uh, let's try other, other uh, random seed values. You can also randomize. So this is the big wing. So the wings, uh, it's called the main wing and these uh, the smaller ones are the winglets. You can also randomize the position. So for this one, 
if you like the half section and just want to randomize the wings there you go Okay, this looks good. And for the plating, five hundred. Increase this to five hundred. Okay. So for the back, if you want this to be some sort of uh. Look like a truster and you like you like everything but don't like the back then you can just cut it with boolean afterwards and design something manually that will fit your um, idea Try another one There we go. Uh, there we go. So that is what is called a geometric spike. Sometimes it can spike, and the vertex can actually go to infinity. So to avoid this, there's a new property called the inset mode. If you switch to uneven, uneven, then it can get rid of that. So basically, this refers to the the way the uh, plating are created. It's it's used using the inset feature in Blender or the inset equivalent in Python and uh, in, in um, Python script. So even means that when you when the plates are created or inserted, they are um, Blender tries to elevate or extrude them evenly, but it can create all these spikes here for this example. So you can use none even for that and you can see that there's not much of a difference the difference will only show once you actually increase the height if you use too much height then uh, there's really not much of a difference I've just exposed this so in the future maybe there will be more definitive uh, uses for the two okay and I find it uh, advantages for now for just uh, exposing them instead of using an event by default. Okay. This looks good also. And we have a bridge type. Uh, actually, let's try and uh, straighten the bridge area in the front. So that's the Z taper at the back. Increase it to reduce the taper actually. There we go. Try the wings. And hey, this actually looks good. See this part here, and that looks like a bridge. Kind of looks like a bridge, so uh, I'm also going to. Increase the margin. So if the if the redo panel uh, clips the entire uh, Blender window, you can try and use uh, you can try and use the uh, middle mouse button to scroll up and down to see all of the properties, or uh, you can you you can uh, collapse the sections by just clicking on this. So um, if uh, 
clicking the uh, sections by closing and opening it, you can see that it's also very slow depending on the subdivisions being used. That is because this is also part, part of the redo panel. It's not affecting the geometry, but when you click this, it is actually uh, refreshing the entire script. So, for example, like I said, if you're using uh, too much of division, the process can be slow. And that also reflects to you when you when you are using the uh, this um, bars here to close and to open and close uh, the uh, property sections. So it's slow, and if we reduce this to zero, you can see that it's faster. Okay, let's try and use this one. Actually looks like a sh this actually looks like a proper ship. Okay, so we have this one here. Let's go to UVs. You can actually straight out UV this in uh, because the the by using the plate and sets it has marked the boundaries of those inset islands, and you can just straight up unwrap this afterwards. You can, uh, it's not perfect. Um, it's just there to make the UV part uh, easier. And uh, um, so there's uh, less manual, manual work for you. When for example, uh, so these are fine. And these are fine. And you can actually uh, um, click this icon here, UV sync selection, and then hover, uh, press 3 on the UV uh, editor to go to face mode and press L to select the entire island and then it will select uh, the corresponding faces in the, in the 3D viewport. So you know which part of the mesh is that. You can hide it. <coughs> Up in, 3D, in the 3D viewport, press Shift H, then you can hide the rest of the unselected geometry. Then you can uh, further um, edit the UV until you've uh, fixed it. Okay, so there's, um, you can also use, apart from this one here, um, yeah, so with this, you can also use text tools the so text tools is a free add-on which you can support financial uh which well uh, yeah which you can support with money if you want to so text uh, you can download it from the net and it uh, it's actually has a, a lot of uh, uses for the uh, for uvs and blender you can edit the layout of the so for example if i were to select this island if i want to okay disable sync won't work um with sync so if i want to flatten this faces i could just use rectify like that iron there we go and then rectify and you can also uh, bake stuff using this so uh, that's uh, one technique um, you can also use smart UV project or use box uh, cube projection like that so cube projection and smart UV project you can use if you're in a hurry, if this if the shift is just going to be rendered far away or mid range, and you are using just the texture to trick the uh, the viewer into actually seeing uh, actually seeing the ship um, detailed using a texture, so a procedural texture. So you can use the 
your projection and smart UV project for quick renders. Okay, let's try and create a shader for this. But first, I'm going to create a base color for this using the random vertex color. I'm going to use the sharp. Uh, yeah, uh, just use black and black and white, and use sharp. So the mark sharp edges are already are already are already marked here when we use the random sharp starship operator so we can just select sharp and then uh, use random seed but if your mesh is not marked then you can use the mark sharp button here okay let's create a shader for this and okay, let's go to shader I'm going to append the uh, branch nodes, which you can find from my store. So append. Uh, you pro you probably can see the uh, append window because I'm using OBS and it can't capture the aux uh, auxiliary windows. So I'm going to append the shader. Branch metal and put the material here. And view it. So here, instead of just an, an RGB, I will use the uh, vertex color that I created a while ago. So a cool thing about cycles is that you can also uh, change the vertex color while while it is uh, rendering the viewport as long as everything is everything in the scene is pretty light. So look at this. So we have quick dirt, cavity mask, edge mask, and scratches. So for something as as big as a ship, you probably won't won't need these scratches, or even the edge mask. Um, we're probably just going to use the uh, quick dirt and cavity mask mostly. So we'll multiply the AO also, or the ambient occlusion. Okay, let's create the, um, the tertiary detail, and we're going to use textures for that. So instead of... Um, you can use geometry or texture for tertiary detail, so geometry... You can uh, use random flow. So let's go back to object uh, color. So you can create uh, the tertiary detail using geometry. 
but in this case in order to keep everything light we're just going to use uh, textures so we can also um so instead of using the uh, random flow on the ship we're going to create a texture on a plane and then bake um, a texture on a plane using random flow bake the detail and then use that uh, bake texture on this on the ship as a tertiary detail okay so this is the um the object which we're going to bake from shift d and this is the the object we're going to use uh, to bake the uh, geometry okay so just increase the subdivision create some variation in these uh, sizes of the faces okay let's uh, do something really uh, simple radial okay um Five and this is ten and increase the subdivision. Okay, so two and five. Okay, let's use that. Now let's use ten here. Okay, five. And just yeah, just select something that looks okay. So I'm using random panels and radial solver for this. Okay, um increase the margin. Let's try and uh, use this. And then uh, we can actually reduce the okay select a face since they are basically have the same plane shift g and select coplanar and it selected the all of the faces that are on a on the same plane as this one here and then we're going to use Selecting all the uh with that with those faces selected, we're going to use panel screws, basic, and then increase the margin and reduce the size. And I'm going to use collection. There we go, and give it a random uh, rotation. There we go. And let's uh okay. Reduce the ranges more and edit the margin. Okay. And then with those faces still selected, we're going to create some scatter objects uh for um uh, sm for those mil small details, so not random scatter, but random cells, and so instead of percentage, I'm going to use number, and I'm going to use 100, and if we zoom over here, and bring back the redo panel using if9, if this disappears, just, just Use if nine to bring it back. As long as you didn't do any other action, you can bring it back again. So I'm going to increase the thickness. Oh, not the thickness. Um, the offset, the depth. So the baker, when we bake this in cycles, the bake engine cannot see this because the bake engine will only see the uh, actually see this so for the bake engine to actually see this we, we, will, we would have to increase the thickness like that so 
there we go so it sees that because of the um, small thickness that you've introduced in the geometry so those are, are our tiny uh, details you can actually increase the size now let's just do 50 increase the size I increase the subdivision to make the faces smaller. And you can randomize this, their positions here. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> selecting the, uh, those faces. Shift Q in random flow. Extras, join objects, join to plane. So, I didn't just use Control J since uh using this you can split it split it again and the objects are retained using the vertex group system it remembers all those uh objects by using the vertex group as you can see here we have the main object the plane and we have the random panel the screws and the cells okay um let's create vertex color for this and use island 0.7 just play around with the values actually this is 2.8 to dark 0.8 okay now i can bake this and we're going to use let's get it closer uh, I'm just going to use uh, 20, 10, 20, 1024 by 1024 image. Actually, we're going to group them. Control G, F9, and name this bake group. Name this object here as our underscore low poly. And this one here is underscore high poly okay so when we get to the baker go to uh, u text tools in the the baking so it says here needs high and low use suffixes as h and p hp or lp so we already did that and actually what's going on is even though we have like five fifty two k faces for this one here it's still not considering it as the as a high poly object so we can actually cheat it by um creating a subdivision for this control one subsorb adding a subsorb control one and It crashed. Okay, let's just wait. Okay. And disable the subdivision in the viewport and also disable subdivision in the render view and also in the edit mode. So basically just disable everything here. And selecting these two when we go back here, now it consider it as high poly. See, so we can now bake this. So baking, uh, let's use ten twenty four by ten uh ten twenty four, ten twenty four by ten twenty four, and let's uh bake a tangent uh normal. Okay. Okay. Uh, bake. It didn't capture the uh, maybe it's the no, it's not a pad, it's not the padding, it's probably the anti alias two.
There we go. So it's still not getting the. This is probably too small for, too small of a detail for 1024 by 1024. So let's use four times the amount of anti-aliasing. Yeah, it can't catch it, but you know. So let's just use the lighter one. 1024. How about 2048? And using two times anti aliasing. There we go. Yeah, it still can see it. Bake. So we're just going to use no anti aliasing and okay, yeah. So the detail is probably too small. Uh but you get the uh You get the idea of what I'm trying to show you. Um, no, 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 don't, don't view the texture. Wait, oh. Okay, bake. So bake group, normal tangent. And then we're going to bake the AO. Samples is 256. Bake. So the higher the samples, the slower the rendering, the, the bake process, but the less noise you will have in the texture. So let's just use this. Oh, actually, it, uh, it captured the rivets on that one. Okay. And then we're going to extract the color. But instead of using the uh, base color like this one, it's going to actually uh, bake the uh, diffuse color of your shader. But we, we just need to, uh, to actually bake the... Uh, bake our vertex color so in order for, for us to do that we're just going to um, bake it as emission where's emit there we go emission and in this one here go to shader new change this to emission then plug in the vertex color so in order for you to have this uh, window here you should enable uh node wrangler in the uh, in the add-ons so this comes free with blender so this is integrated in blender but you have to activate it okay in the scripts activate it and you'd have uh, windows like this one and other um features here okay so there we go and go back to UV and then bake the emission. Uh, bake. Okay, so this is our diffuse using the vertex color. We can. Um, we can affect this more using the color ramp later on. So I'm just going to uh, save the uh, save the textures, the image textures into the blend. Okay. 
file, external data, pack resources. Pack, some images of pain dito on this engines. No, probably not. Okay, let's go to the shader. And, oh, the shader of the ship. Let's hide this. Hide away. Oh, let's go here. And let us, so control T, just control T and break the connection. So UV, we're going to just use box for now, or cube projection. So we have UV here and connect this to, uh, okay. So the, uh, we're going to remove this, connect this to the normal. And in vector, normal map, and let us select the our baked normal here, so non-color, okay. And let's see what we got. Five. Next up, we're going to connect the other maps after this one here. So we're going to connect the AO. I'll multiply the AO here. Connect this and let us use the AO, Bay Group AO. and right here so with normal map uh this is automatically chosen uh prob probably because the image is uh in blender only and not saved but if you were to um uh, load the image outside of blender this color space will not be uh, disabled you can select something here so in norm in normal maps use non color for color space not srgb okay for them to work correct correctly in color space set these to non color for other stuff use srgb okay um yeah so they're using the same mapping uv and using the same mapping here And then, actually, this is the second one, and the first one here should be the diffuse. Oh, okay, not AO emission, oh, or the emission. I'm gonna try and edit the shader some more.
Okay, so I'm also going to put in some lights. I'm going to append one of the node uh, groups I've developed, uh, which you can also get from the sample file when you buy uh, random starships, which is the lights, uh, procedural light, procedural lighting using node group. So I'm going to append that. Um, node tree and lights so here i'm going to add the lights unplug it to the emission and give this something like 20. and then I'm gonna edit the lights node group So I'm not, you might be wondering why, why I'm not speaking when I'm rendering in the viewport. That is because my noise cancelling uh, software is tied to the GPU. So when I render and speak, then my voice is going to crack up or stutter. So that is our lighting. And that is how you can create plating. The uh, detail by just uh, baking uh, the result of random flow using what I've demonstrated on just the plane. So this is actually pretty simple, and I've got uh i baked more some uh in the past which is uh, a lot more detailed so we can load it up here and uh, this is let's start with the normal so uh you you can't see the window that i'm looking at right now because obs can't uh render it okay normal srgb o color space is non color and let's see. There we go. Uh, there we go. And match it up with the AO. AO and also the uh, uh, diffuse. sRGB for the AO and diffuse. Non-color for the normal. Then when we render it, uh, you see this. And we can... Just this. So, so this with this one, I used uh, pipes or random tubes, and then uh, baked it.
So let's choose another one. Normals. Normals first. Um, normal. Change this to non color. And AO. And then diffuse. Well, let's. So with this detail, uh, let's try and use material view. So with with this detail, I use the um, upcoming random slice. You don't have this yet. So in the uh, upon upon view viewing this video, you don't have this yet. So if um, at this time you don't have it yet, but of course, uh, if you're use if you're watching this and you have this, this is the one I use for this detail here. Using the same technique I've showed you. So I used random slides on the plane and then baked it like this one here. So ended up with this detail. This is actually one of the better ones. So let's try. Um, Smart UV project. Smart straighter. You can also use uh, something like uh, in this view, just project from view. You will have distortions in the top part because we use this view here but what if you use the top view project from view okay so there's a bunch of uh uv um technique you can use to uh, play around with the texture and how it looks to you uh how it looks on your ship okay Q projection. Let's go back to Q projection. So this one is actually uh, more convincing. Okay, so if you want to go past the Unimesh structure and just play around uh, because you're, uh, if you're going to, uh, if you save this model, then you sit again for another um, render and you're just playing around with geometry just for concept art. You can actually just uh, inset on top of this and use geometric detail. So I'm going to use a new operator. Okay. Face select. Length faces increase the threshold the length. And use yes, length flat faces. So this basically selected the faces of certain size and ignore the faces that are uh, on this margin here. So pretty useful if you forgot to use uh, vertex group toggle in random panels or random strip. So this top here we're going to um, 
you can select you can select the rest if you want list this non manifold limit is none non manifold okay actually forgot what these are for so uh, detailing over this let's just use uh, random panels and let's go back to object get rid of the center line and use one panel size in PST. and also this one here okay too much when it's uh i've also encoded the answer mode here and also in random extrude so when you see those spikes, you can use non-even inset mode, and it will get rid of those. Finally, let's go number, and let's increase the number to 200. Uh, I mean, yeah, let's see, 20, yeah, 50, and increase the height. This is so this is this will randomize the inset height from the minimum to maximum. Slowly but surely. Okay. We have those details, geometric details, but we're still going to since the shader is using vertex uh shade uh vertex color, we just have to quickly I uh, use this on this on this one. So sharp or island for that. So let's just use island. And so rendering, we have those um, geometries that are broken up into this uh, face islands or panel islands, which is the terminology used uh, for random flow. And you can see that it creates some interest on the model. So let's see the model without the geom uh, the additional geomet geometry. And let's see it with the additional geometry. So. So we can also break the surface surfaces a bit more by creating those uh, tiny spikes. So random cells and increase the depth. There we go. And this is number increase the result increase the subdivision. So this will make the faces smaller by increasing the resolution and thereby uh, making this extrusions also smaller and let's switch to individual uh unique lengths for each uh, sticks this will be much smaller uh much slower so watch out okay and decrease the depth to something like 0.4 You can randomize their position, make them smaller even more, increasing the subdivision. Of course, it will uh, get slower and slower because as the resolution increases. Okay, let's see if those sticks. Let's uh, create random vertex color for the for the for them as well and use island island for the limit and let's render so as you can see it's much better to look at instead of just the uh this flat profile we managed to break it. We can experiment more with the shape. 
uh, with other operators here. We, uh, let's try random scatter and just use cube. And let's use a smaller cube. Let's use 500 cubes. Oops. The faces are probably too. F um, yeah. Probably not right for this operation. Okay. Let's use the uh, random cells again. This time just sharp and just a bit of offset. Just to make them obvious on surface of the surface of the ship. 100 make them smaller you can increase their size here let's try 200 actually let's try 500 okay and give them a bit of a thickness let's go to object okay and then um give them vertex color again so black and white just island randomize the value and then render yeah so there they are You can give them a different shader if you like them to be more um if you like to view, uh if you like the viewer to see them uh more on the surface of the ship. Uh, actually we can create we can duplicate shader. This one here. I create by pu uh, pushing this uh, icon here and then um, so this is now different material which is 0 0.001 and let's knock off the textures Make it darker. So now you can see them more. Um, now you can finally render this and put this on your scene. So, yeah, you can even uh, render, uh, you can even render this on a much um, closer distance than just mid to far away ranges. Because of the additional details that we did. So uh, now this looks more believable because of the extra details that we did. So for the other uh, geometries, if you want to uh, just select parts on some of the some of the mesh to isolate uh, to detail them in isolation, uh, this will make the operation. Uh, faster instead of just selecting everything and 
the uh, using the random operators in one go. Uh, really atmospheric. So render this, and with a few composting tricks, this will look really awesome. Then you can save it and then reuse it on your other projects. To make it lighter, you can use you can just select everything here and X limited dissolve. It will keep most of the shape just to make it lighter. So from 15k faces to 5k. And you can also do that uh, for the other geometry. You can also do that on the base geometry, selecting everything limited dissolve. Brings it down to just 1k. Okay, so there you have it. Um, how to detail your ship using a baked result from random flow. And also, uh, if you want uh, the added uh, geometry on top of the base mesh. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, make sure to use the comment section, comment section or the links in the description. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.